So when you are doing two two, make sure you identify the variables and then you write an equation and then you solve. Make sure you are doing those three steps, especially when you take your test on Tuesday. All right, so the first one it says, you start with $75 in your savings account. So we're gonna start with $75. And then we are going to deposit $35 a week. So it's going to, so when you deposit money, you add it to your account, and then you're gonna add $35 a week. Now, X, and then you wanna make sure off to the side somewhere, you say what X represents, because you want to identify the variables. The so X is weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, and the thing, the one thing, time out, the one thing that you wanna make sure you do, because we're Algebra 2 and we're beginning, Throughout the, we're doing easier problems that we're going to solve equations for right now. So you want to make sure you get the steps down because we, you always have to be able to write a formula. So now, what does this represent? Because what is an equation? Because it says to write an equation. So you have to make sure you know how to write an equation. <coughs> what does it have to have? An equal sign. And without reading the next part, what right now does this represent? 75 plus 35x, what does that represent? It, it represents the money in the bank, right? So to write an equation, you, you can write y is equal to um, money in the bank or cash flow. And then we're going <laughs> to cash flow, money in the bank. <laughs> so. Then you go to the next sentence and it's going to tell you what to put into your equation to solve it out. It says, how long will it take you to put away 1,160? So where does 1,160 go? And for Y. So we're going to put in 1,160 and for my Y. And bring down 75 plus 35x. I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract my 75. So I get 35x is equal to 1085. And then what's my last step? Divide by, Divide by 35. So x is going to be 31. But 31 what? Weeks. Weeks. When you're taking your test, and when you took your quiz, the same thing you had, th this problem, this type of problem was two points. You had your equation point, and a lot of you, what you didn't do is, you, to be an equation, you have to have an equals and you have to have variables. That's what an equation is. If I, and if I yelled out, tell me what the equation of a rectangle is, do you know what the equation of a rect, the, to find the area of a rectangle? Yeah, so it's area is equal to length times width, right? So you know that. So that's what, when you're writing an equation, that's what you have to look for. All right, very good. All right, here we go. M money is borrowed at 11% interest. And then after one year, it's like competing with me. After one year, we have 721.50 is paid, is paid on the loan and the loan is paid off. How much was the original loan? So, the original loan is our, what variable? What is that? <laughs> no idea, they're like, I think they're, having, I think they're having, I think they're having a hoedown. Do you need to tell them that they're going to that? No. No. Oh, he's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all, all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're having a they're having a they're having a dance. Now remember that remember that variables remember that a variable is it can change. I might call it x, you might call it t or s or whatever. But biggest thing is just make sure you know that one of ours 
is the original value. So the original loan. And I'm going to call it my X. All right. Get down. <laughs> All right. We have here, this is going to be a fun YouTube to watch. Um, we have here 11% interest. If you are paying 11% interest, how do you know how much interest you have to pay on your loan? What do we have to do with that 11%? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is put it into a decimal. And this has to be multiplied by how much you are borrowing. So if I were paying 11% on a certain amount of money, I have to times it by my money. But this is only the what? What is this right here? This is the interest, right? So do we have to pay only the interest on a loan? You have to pay the, what you borrowed, right? So we have to also pay the original amount, right? So you paid your interest, but you also have to pay your original amount. And this is what? This is how much your loan is, right? So we will call it Y, and Y is the amount of the loan or amount um, paid for the loan. Right, so if you borrow money and you pay the interest, this is the amount you have to pay for your, for the whole thing. When I bought my, when I buy my house and if I ever pay it off, I don't think I will, but if I ever pay it off, I will have paid more than three times the amount that I borrowed the first time. So it is crazy like how much money you actually borrow or pay on that, but that's how it is. So what do we put in for why? How much did we pay for our loan? Very good, 721.50. And then we have to do what to this? So we combine like terms, so we have 1.11x is equal to? And so last step we have to divide, divide by 1.11. So our loan was $650. How do you know that? Um, 721.50 divided by 1.1. You just, do you see why at this point? No, what I'm saying like, I don't know how you just do that in your head or did you do it on the computer? Oh, I, I usually do it all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I did not do that in my head. That would be crazy. There are some people that can, though, but uh, not me. My dad yeah, not me. I, I can't do that in my head. All right. The perimeter, what does the perimeter mean? Adding up all of the sides is right. So the perimeter of a basketball court is 96 meters. So I'm going to draw a picture so you can kind of see it. So we have the perimeter is 96 meters, and the length is 14 more than the width. Remember that whatever is usually by your your end is going to be your very one of your variables. So x is going to be the width. On my picture, if I call this x, this is also x. What is my, I want you guys to read this and find out what you think this length is right here. So take a moment, don't say out the answer yet. I want everyone to get in their head. What do you think the length is? It says the length is 14 more than the width. So it is 14 plus X. Because it's 14 more than the original. Now, going back to our original sentence, it says the perimeter. What does it mean to be the perimeter again, you said? Mm -hmm. Adding them all up. So, since you have this picture here, to me, I would just add up my things here so we don't have a whole bunch to write. So, how many X's do I have? I have four, so I have four X. And how much of the numbers? 28. 28. Very good. 
That's your equation. So now it says the perimeter is how much? 96 is equal to your 4x plus 28. Subtract the 28. So we get 68 is equal to 4x and divide by 4. x is 17. So x is 17. But we also, it says what are the dimensions? So we need to know what, so the x, first of all, what is this? The 17 is the width. And what is the length? The length is 14 plus that. So you just add 14, so it's 17 plus 14 is 31. Can you just draw the box again and label it or something? Would that work too? Or do you want um, to it'll probably, like on your test, it'll probably have like length equals okay. width equals, so you know to write it. Because it's just easier, like on your test, I kind of have it just like your quiz. I have it straight down mm -hmm. to grade it real quick. Okay. So, but if you had it off the side on a worksheet like this, it'd be fine. Okay. All right. How do you find the average of tests or of anything? How do you find the average of things? Add yes, add them up and then divide by how many they are. So a student receives 93 on a on a test and then she receives an 89 and then a 72 80 and then a 96 they want to know what they have to score on the next test so X so anytime you write X down we want to always say X equals what it equals so what does X equal six the sixth test very good And all of this is going to be divided by how much? How many tests are there? Six. So six, so we're gonna divide by six. six. And this will equal your, what, if we, what are we finding here? This is gonna be your average. So if you need an equation, you have to put y huh. for your equation, and y is the average. All right, so in your calculators, you don't have to because I'll tell you what it is, but in your calculators, you would go 93 plus 89 and add those numbers up. You get 430 plus x all over six but now instead of y what number what are we trying to get what average are we trying to get 88, 88. and i'm going to stop there and make sure you guys understand all i did was add up those numbers there and then i put in 88 for the average now i want to get rid of this six right here if I want to get rid of that six what can I do to both sides here what can I do to both sides multiply by six, multiply by six. yep opposite so we're going to multiply both sides by six because of um, space guys I'm going to come down here so this will go down there so we have 430 plus x on my left side and 528 on my right. And then your last step would be minus 430. 430. So x is going to equal 98. So what does that tell us? That, she mu that the student must get a 
All right, I'm going to read this um, problem to you, and as I'm reading it, I want you to jot down what are, there's going to be two variables. I want you to jot down what variables we are going to have. It says the area of Ben's farm is 47% of the area of Katie's farm. Katie's farm is 220 acres. Approximately how large is Ben's farm? So what, and remember this can be anything, so we can even do, um, first of all, I'll find out what the variables are. So what are your variables? Ben's, Ben's farm. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna do a B for Ben's farm. You, like I said, it can be anything, but Ben's farm, the area, right? And what is the other variable? Katie's farm. So I'm just going to put K for Katie's farm. All right. So we have here. Um, now I go back through and I'm going to read it to get a, an equation. The area of Ben's farm. So what are we going to replace that with? The area of Ben's farm, B, is equals 47%. What's 47%? 0.47. Of oh, means, can you remember what of? Of means multiply, right? Of means multiply to Katie's farm. So Katie's farm was just your K. But I thought so B was Ben's farm. We did. Area Ben's farm is 47% of Katie's farm. Oh, awesome. Okay. So now it just says if Katie's farm is 220 acres, so now we can put in 220 for what? K. Okay. Of means multiply. If so a lot of times what they did is on the other problems, what you're probably thinking is it would tell you what Ben's farm was, and then they say what is Katie's, and then that's when you, you multiplied, because they don't always tell you. They can tell you Ben's or Katie's, and then they can tell you to find the other. So then you would just put it into whichever they told you. So if they told you Ben's, you would put Ben's in here, and then you would multiply it or divide it. If you put Katie's, you just do it with the formulas, and that's why it's important to have the formula. Cool. Um, so then you multiply that out and you get 103.4 acres squared. So, B so Ben's farm, yep, for B equals, which is Ben's farm. Questions? <coughs>